Hey guys, I'm Andrea. Hi, I'm Tina. I'm Griff. Hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm Dominic. Hi, I'm Ava. I'm Michelle. Hi, I'm Harry. I'm Anshita. Hi, I'm Sammy. I'm Abby. I'm Maddie. I'm Sabina. Hi, I'm Ellie. I'm Sophia. Hey fellow growers, my name's Teddy, and the plants I'm growing for this project are marigolds is my flower, and cilantro is my herb. Hey guys, I'm Sadie, and I'm growing basil and broccoli. I'm Emmett, and the plants that I'm growing at home are blue borage and marigolds. In today's video, we will be discussing ecosystem health. If you have not checked out videos one through three, it will be in the link in the description down below. And I highly recommend you check those out before you continue. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about mutualistic relationships. Mutualistic relationships are an essential part of survival for organisms in the animal kingdom. There are multiple different types of relationships evident in the wild, but the one we're gonna be focusing on today is symbiosis. You may have not heard of symbiosis before, but you've definitely seen it in action. Here's a fun example that we all know of, bees and flowers and their interactions together. Flowers produce a sweet and sticky liquid that you probably know of called nectar. This nectar is produced from glands called nectaries within its petals. The substance not only tastes sweet, but it's filled with lots of strong smelling sugars that the flower produces. As mentioned in our previous video about photosynthesis, when the flowers take in carbon dioxide, and water from the outside and turn it into sugars for themselves as well as oxygen. These sweet smells attract pollinating animals, or for short, pollinators. The most common pollinators that we see around Alameda are bees, and while there are so many others that pollinate in their own unique ways, bees are the species we're going to be focusing on for today. There are animals that like to consume the nectar and in doing so, pollinate the flower. Here's how it works. When bees land on the flower that has nectar, they use the proboscis, a long tongue-like muscle, very similar to that of an elephant, to eat the nectar. While they're on the flower, they pick up pollen from the flower and it sticks to their legs. Their legs have these hairy barbs on them that the pollen sticks to. Believe it or not, there are male and female species for certain types of flowers. The male species is the one that has pollen. Once the bee has enough nectar, it flies off to another flower with the pollen still on its legs. When it lands, some of the pollens caught on its legs and the hair on its legs falls off onto the petals of the flower just landed on. If the flower just landed on is the female of the flower they just collected pollen from or collected pollen from some time before, a tube will open up in the female flower and it collects the pollen and puts it into its stem where it then begins to form into a seed. It's really interesting to think that a plant and an animal, two completely different species, rely on each other to survive. Without nectar from a flower, a bee would not be able to gather it to bring it back to the hive to produce honey for the colony. And without the bee, the flower would not be able to pollinate. These two species are essential for the survival of the other. They live in symbiosis. Now whenever you see a bee landing on a flower, you know there's so much more going on than just collecting of nectar. There are a bunch of microorganisms in the plant that help the plant grow. These are known as microbes. Today we'll be discussing four microbes, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and nematodes. These all play an essential role in the ecosystem and are necessary for the plant to thrive. The first of these that we are going to discuss is bacteria. Typically when people hear bacteria, there's a negative connotation that goes along with it. In this case, bacteria is necessary. Bacteria is a decomposer and it provides the nutrients that are necessary for the plant. Along with providing nutrients for the plant, they recycle carbon, sulfur, nitrogen, and phosphorus. The next microbe that we are going to discuss is fungi. Fungi is a little bit bigger than bacteria and is a lot more complex. Similar to bacteria, fungi are decomposers. Protozoa is a little bit different than bacteria and fungi. Protozoa are single cell animals that eat bacteria and fungi, and in some cases, other protozoa. Nematodes are very similar to protozoa. They also eat bacteria and fungi. When nematodes digest the bacteria and fungi, it provides the plant with the necessary minerals and nutrients that they need to survive. So I'm here to talk to you guys about how energy is transferred through an ecosystem. Last week you learned all about how plants get their energy from the sun through photosynthesis and all other organisms actually get their energy from plants, whether it be by eating them or eating other animals that have eaten them. And there are levels to this chain in an ecosystem called trophic levels, and I'm going to talk about them today. Plants are producers, which simply means that they produce their own food. They make up the 
first trophic level. The plants are consumed by the primary consumers, which are herbivores. As you may already know, herbivores are animals that only eat plants. Examples of primary consumers would be rabbits, insects, and hummingbirds. The primary consumers are then consumed by the secondary consumers, which are omnivores and carnivores. Omnivores are animals that eat plants and meat, and carnivores are animals that only eat meat. Examples of secondary consumers would be wolves, crows, and foxes. Tertiary consumers come next. They are carnivores that consume the secondary consumers. Examples of tertiary consumers would be eagles and mountain lions. Finally, there are decomposers. A decomposer is an organism that eats the dead animals and puts nutrients back in the soil for the producers to use. Decomposers include fungi, earth earthworms, bacteria, and they are very important because the chemicals such as nitrogen and carbon that they put back into the soil are essential nutrients for the plant's growth. About 10% of the energy from one trophic level is transferred to the next level. For example, the hummingbird gets 10% of the energy from the plant it consumes. The rest of the energy, about 90%, is released to the environment as heat and waste. This energy also goes to the decomposers. Kenneth Lai, an Alameda High student, is making face shields for workers at Alameda Hospital. What he's doing is a great thing, and if you guys are interested in helping in any way, the link will be down in the description below. Feel free to go check it out and see what you can do to help. Thank you for watching this week's video. See ya.